Um, this is Tiger Brook with Portly Pig Studios and I was just going to discuss what I've been up to lately. I'm here in my, um, my, my studio. It's actually a cubicle, but um, Greg and I have turned our cubicle space into a studio. It's kind of interesting. So we come into the office every day. Right now it's three in the morning, um, so I may not be incredibly coherent. Um, so here's the idea. With the Gollum Project, we need to be able to cast Greg's face in foam because he's the stand-in for the animator. And so the idea of casting um, Greg's face um, is really imperative that the golem is a symbol of the animator. Um, it kind of just goes down the line, the idea that we're made in God's image since we're using that type of symbology. Um, I've never used foam latex before. Um, it's actually, I did a lot of research on it, and it's actually extremely difficult. And I was, I was very scared, um, actually, to try it because they're talking about having, like, the thermometer to measure the temperature, and you got to measure the humidity, and you have to bake it in the oven, and you have to have a gram scale, and everything's got to be just perfect or it falls flat. And it's really for professional use only, and, and I, I, I was just, I, I, it's really expensive, and I, I was slightly terrified, if you, if you really want to come right down to it. I was terrified, not slightly terrified, I was extremely terrified that I was going to screw it up. Um, so I've kind of done my own research, um, and I, I thought the best thing I can do is just try it out, expensive or not. Um, so this is, this is what, what's happened for me. Um, I wanted to cast from life, so um, the first trial um, I've done has been an alginate. And alginate, they don't recommend using alginate because it can, um, it can make, the, the mold materials that you use can affect the foam latex and it can make it fall flat, which actually is something, it supposedly is something that happens very, very easily. I have yet to have it fall flat. But um, you can use alginate and it does work. Um, the other thing that they suggest um, is putting it in an oven and keeping it in the mold in the oven, which I have yet to do. <laughs> I pull it right out of the mold, stick it in the oven and call it good. Um, so this is this is the foam latex that I've been using. It's a GM foam latex, high grade foam latex base. And I actually don't have any measuring cups or anything. I, I don't eyeball it, but what I do is I use a series of ratios, which is not something anybody so far that I have come across has been using. They all measure it out really perfectly. And uh, I, I just find that to be a lot of work. And so if you look at this, all right, right on here it says it just takes one quart and it's, um, I wrote down my instructions right along the bottle so that I could know what I did. Uh, if you look on, so this is the foaming agent. It says 30 grams per 150 grams of latex base. Right there is a ratio to use. So I just moved the decimal point over to, so it's like three to 15, right? So I use three whatevers to 15 whatevers. Um, by whatever, it's just a unit of measurement, um, a, a, an exponent, so to speak, uh, not an exponent, um, a variable, a letter, an X. Um, what was I using? I was using this. So I made 15 of these in a bowl, three of these in a bowl. It's pretty easy. This is just uh, <laughs> half of a, a ping pong ball. Um, I, in fact, I even cut the batch in half. So instead of using 15, I use seven. Now this may be a lot of garbledy, uh, gobbledygook to anybody who's listening to this um, who doesn't really care. But to someone who's learning how to do this, it's really interesting. Um, then I had my mother um, send me her mixer. So you put everything in a bowl and my mother sent me her mixer from home, an old one. <laughs> and obviously there's, there's foam on it still. But from all the research I've done, it says it's very important to have like real a real industrial strength, like mixing bowl and have the industrial mixer and a special oven, all this stuff. And I gotta tell you, so far that's nothing but bunk. I have yet to have anything fall. All I do is I use my ratios, measure it out, mix it till it looks about right. It looks kind of creamy, like batter. It's almost like I could eat it, though it's toxic. Don't don't do that. Um, then I stick it in the mold. I just, I mean, I put the gelling agent in, which they say put in last. I whip it up, stick it in the mold, call it good. So far, I haven't had a problem. Um, here's my face. <laughs> it's kind of creepy looking. It's, there's my nose. Um, it's just um, latex. It's floppy, whatever. Um, here it is. This is what's left over in the bowl. It's kind of the skin texture. I just add a little bit of color and call it good. I don't know what the big deal is. Apparently, I'm missing something, but to me... Foam latex has been a snap. I don't get it. 
Anyway, if, uh, if you ever have any questions about doing foam latex the Portly Pig Studios way, give me a call. I'll help you out.